Good morning, dear colleagues. Today I will present you my 12 months progress in my PhD topic, which is the targeted therapy in ovarian cancer. Let me introduce our team. My name is Istvan Baradac, and I'm a resident doctor at the Department of uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology. Uh, my supervisors are Baraj Lindner and uh, Ferenc Banhidi. The SMS is uh, Brigitte Toic, and uh, the uh, statistician is Alex Váradi. My vision is that the molecular targeted treatment could completely change oncological therapies and uh, the mission behind my work is to learn about the possibilities given by these targeted therapies and uh, bring the knowledge back to the bedside. We started to work on three different projects. Uh, today I will talk about uh, the first and the second one and the third one will be an endometrial cancer registry. I, uh, I will explain it in the next progress report. So the first project, the first project is the efficacy and safety of PARP inhibitor therapy in advanced ovarian cancer. It's a meta-analysis uh, started in uh, September. Let me give you some background information about our project. Uh, ovarian cancer cases are uh, diagnosed uh, at an advanced level in over 75% of the cases, and uh, advanced ovarian cancer relapsed in over 60% uh, of the cases with uh, uh, standard chemotherapeutic uh, treatment. So these facts highlight uh, the urgent need for a new therapeutic pathway, and based on recent uh, clinical trials, uh, PARP inhibitors could be a solution. Our aim is to assess the efficacy and safety of PARP inhibitor therapy in advanced ovarian cancer. Okay. A question is that do PARP inhibitor therapy uh, provide uh, longer progression-free survival for advanced ovarian cancer patients? Our patients are newly diagnosed and uh, relapsed ovarian cancer patients. Our intervention is PARP inhibitor maintenance therapy or monotherapy compared to uh, placebo or uh, standard chemotherapy, and our outcomes are progression-free survival, overall survival, and adverse events. Our hypothesis is that uh, PARP inhibitor therapy uh, are well-tolerated and provide better pro uh, survival for these patients. We ran our systematic search, uh, updated systematic search in uh, April of 2022, and uh, it resulted in uh, 21 eligible full text for our meta-analysis. Uh, as we arrive to the results, I will show you uh, a graph of the pooled hazard ratios uh, of the forest plots in the prog uh, progression-free survival uh, outcome for recurrent and newly diagnosed ovarian cancer uh, patients. In the left side, uh, on the first column, you could see the different settings of the therapies for the recurrent ovarian cancer and newly diagnosed cancer and the different uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, treatments. Um, as you can see, the uh, PARP inhibitor therapy uh, provides uh, statistically, statistically and uh, clinically uh, significant uh, progression-free survival benefit for almost uh, every patient population. Uh, for the second uh, result uh, table, you could see the uh, adverse events in newly diagnosed uh, ovarian cancer patients with uh, PARP inhibitor therapy uh, compared to placebo, as uh, it's, uh, it's uh, almost obvious that the uh, risk of adverse events is, uh, is uh, increased with the uh, PARP inhibitor therapy against the uh, placebo, but as you can see uh, in the bottom of the slide, uh, these uh, adverse events could be uh, handled with dose modification and uh, treatment discontinuation uh, was needed in a minority of the cases. 
As we arrive to the summary, I would like to mention the strengths and limitations of our study. Uh, our study is based on, uh, almost, uh, only on uh, clinic, uh, randomized clinical trials, and uh, we had uh, homogeneous populations. Uh, we have results in clinically imp important subgroups, and uh, the overall risk of bias was low. On the other hand, uh, there was uh, minor differences in uh, intervention. Uh, in some cases, the overall survival uh, data was unavailable, and uh, the uh, uh, follow-up time overall was short. As a conclusion, we could say that there was a, an improvement in progression-free survival and an increased number of uh, adverse events. So for, for the clinical question, uh, clinical uh, uh, implication, the PARP inhibitor treatment could be given uh, to uh, ovarian cancer cases in a newly diagnosed or in a uh, recurrent uh, stage and uh, the adverse event could be managed by dose modification instead of uh, treatment discontinuation. And uh, there are also, uh, also uh, uncertain uh, questions about the therapies, uh, like uh, the progression-free survival prolongation uh, seen in the BRCA Y-type patients, and uh, the best timing for the therapy is almost uncertain, and uh, also uncertain, and uh, if there is uh, no way to get uh, uh, more uh, benefits about uh, this PARP inhibitor therapy, the, uh, the com combinational treatment with other targeted uh, therapies uh, should be investigated in the future. Uh, our man uh, manuscript is uh, ready and almost finished for an internal review. And uh, I I'd like to continue with our second project. It's, uh, it's uh, almost the same. It's investigating a combinational therapy, a combinational targeted therapy, which is the anti-VEGF plus PARP inhibitor combinational treatment for ovarian cancer patients. Uh, as I mentioned, this uh, uh, disease is characterized by late diagnosis and high relapse rate. Uh, there are limiting factors for, uh, to given uh, multiple lines of uh, chemotherapy uh, pass, uh, treatment for these patients. And uh, this uh, combination holds the opportunity for the future to give these patients uh, chemotherapy-free treatment. And uh, the combination, uh, these drugs also improve each other clinical in, uh, outcomes. Our aim is to assess the efficacy and safety of uh, this combinational treatment for ovarian cancer patients. Our clinical question is, do the co uh, combinational treatment provide better progression-free survival? Our patients are women diagnosed with advanced ovarian uh, cancer. Our intervention is the combinational treatment. Our uh, uh, control is the uh, PARP inhibitor alone or uh, chemotherapy alone. And uh, our outcomes are progression-free survival, overall survival, and adverse events. And the hypothesis is kind of the same. Uh, the combination of treatment uh, could provide better progression-free survival and uh, well tolerated for the patient. Uh, we uh, finished the preparation of our second project, and uh, as the first will be sent to internal review, we will start, start the uh, statistical analysis. Uh, we would like to uh, finish our first two projects in the uh, fall of 2022. Uh, and I'd like to uh, close my presentation with the words of uh, Hippocrates, wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your nice presentation. Um, did you account for the BRCA status of the patients? I saw uh, on one of the uh, slides of you that uh, there was uh, a subgroup analysis on BRCA positive patients. Was, the was there a difference uh, between unselected and BRCA positive uh, patients? Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's an obvious thing that the PARP inhibitors, as uh, Tamás mentioned before, is, uh, work uh, uh, particularly better for uh, uh, 
BRCA uh, positive patients. And yes, we uh, divided uh, our patients for these subgroups uh, based on uh, BRCA mutated and BRCA Y type patients. And uh, uh, the, over the progression free survival benefit was uh, better and uh, uh, bigger for the BRCA mutant patients. Was, was this difference significant or statist statistically significant, yes or no? Different be between the uh, all patients, patients and uh, um, it, it uh, wasn't compared between the two groups. There, all, uh, for the uh, total population, the progression-free survival uh, for the PARP inhibitors against the chemotherapy or the placebo was significantly better but it wasn't compared to uh, BRCA white types and BRCA mutated too. Because it cannot be read from, from uh, the data uh, or, or, uh, or it was just not reported I, in the studies? I will, I will show the exact data. So as you can see, uh, here you can see uh, on the top the total population and uh, the hazard ratio is 0 0.34 and the BRCA, for the BRCA mutated patients, the hazard ratio is 0 0.24. So it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's a strong evidence for, uh, for uh, almost every group and uh, for these two, two to give this uh, therapy. And uh, the difference is not that big. The, uh, that's a question, that, uh, why there isn't a, a big difference. Uh, it, it has to be answered in the future. Sorry to interrupt, but I think Tibor's question was about that if you could uh, make subgroups in the PARP inhibitor maintenance versus placebo, like a subgroup for the BRCA mutant, the, generally the germline mutant, and then the wild type, and could you test for subgroup difference? I think that was your... Yes, yes, I understand that, but I, I told you that uh, we didn't uh, do this kind of uh, comparison. It, it, it uh, would be a, a good idea, but uh, I don't know if it's, a, if it's an important question or not. Maybe it could be answered well, I later. think it would be an important question, but could you uh, tell me how is the frequency of BRCA mutations in ovarian cancer? Is it high or low? Or? It, in ovarian cancer, it's around 20%. But uh, for uh, ovarian cancer, the, uh, for advanced ovarian cancer, and almost 50% uh, of the cases, there is another uh, homologue recombinant uh, uh, deficiency. Like the, uh, it, it's a bigger uh, group uh, for, and the BRCA, mutate, BRCA mutation is a subgroup for it. So uh, this HRD, the homologue uh, recombination deficiency, is uh, all, is. Uh, is a factor too to be sensitive to PARP inhibitors. It's, a, it's another blinding factor. May so. I have a, 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 another question? Uh, can you tell me what, what uh, um, the indication for a maintenance PARP inhibitor therapy? So it is uh, uh, the, the patient should answer in a first line therapy for a while and then uh, uh, the, the maintenance therapy can, can be given or, or the, how it works? Yeah, yes, the indication is uh, different for the three different uh, PARP inhibitors, and uh, uh, for the Olaparib, the, uh, the most uh, studied one, the most investigated one, uh, it, uh, it, can, it uh, could be given to HRD uh, uh, positive uh, patients uh, with uh, uh, two or more uh, previous line of chemotherapy. chemotherapy. So the patient has to answer the chemotherapy to, to receive... Uh, for the recurrent phase, yes. And uh, for the uh, newly diagnosed uh, status, it's, uh, it's, in every case, it's uh, given as a maintenance, so after the chemotherapy. And it's given in a two-year uh, maintenance phase after the chemo uh, chemotherapy ends.